are going to start the brand new topic. It's called nuclear physics. In nuclear physics, the first thing you're going to learn is the law of conservation of mass energy. And this is basically you should understand that the law that we study, right? That energy can neither be created energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it changes to one form to another now in this one we used to think that it only changes from one type of energy to another but in reality even mass can be changed to energy or energy can convert back to mass depending on the situation all right so you guys need to remember this is interchangeable and now there are two things that i want you to write this will be given to you in the exam if the, the question comes but mass of proton is 1.00 seven two seven six that is the value in uh, atomic mass unit mass of neutron 1.008665u and uh, mass of electron is 0.0005u now these values are have uh, about five six decimal places we intentionally do that because the the change in them is very small and we write it to the maximum number of significant that they will be giving to you uh, do not round them up because that would not help so this is basically the rest mass you guys need to remember all right now The thing is, this value, U, it is called the Unified Atomic Mass Unit or Unified Atomic Mass. Just let's write that only. So this is basically defined as the standard mass of atomic particles. And that is equal, oh my God, that is equal to one twelfth of mass of carbon twelfth atom. One U is equal to one point six six times ten raised to minus twenty seven kilograms so that's how it is now now kids this relative atomic mass is basically the mass of an atom that is the ratio of the rest mass of an atom to the unified atomic mass. Like for example, if you look at carbon 14, so carbon 14 has 14 U, which is its relative atomic mass. It's not the real mass, 
it is relative to the atomic unified atomic mass so you guys need to remember that please write this down and if you have any questions while you're writing please let me know Now, the next thing we're going to do is the definition of a nuclear binding energy. Now, the definition of nuclear binding energy can be of two types. So nuclear binding energy of a nucleus is defined as the amount of energy released when an atom is formed from its constituent particles. Either you can write this or the second type of definition would be nuclear binding energy is the amount of energy required to break up a nucleus into its constituent particles. This is A scalar quantity and the symbol that we use for binding energy is delta E like that so you guys should remember that basically binding energy means that if you if you take up like take away some of the energy from the nucleons they come close and become a nucleus and if you provide the same amount of energy to them they would break up into individual particles so this is what it means now you would often find them in this particular unit let me write it down often measured in mega electron volts rather than in joules remember this mega electron volt means that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 is to minus 19 joules you might have done that in uh, as already and one mega electron volt is 1.6 times 10 is to power minus 13 joules so often you would find them uh, the answers and values given like this so do remember that
Okay, kids. Now, speaking of that, then let's have a look at the Zenob wire relate. So it was open my laptop, and then it randomly just started updating itself. So it took time. Okay, and what about yesterday? Why were you here? So yesterday, um, I took a nap, and since I changed my phone, my alarm was not working. Okay, please watch the recording for yesterday. Oh, there was no recording. We just we we basically solved questions from quantum physics, so you got to do that. Okay. Now, kids, let's go on to the next. So then the next thing, it is called the mass deficit or defect. Basically, these both things are the same. And mass deficit or defect is defined as the difference in mass of a bound atom and the total mass of the constituents that make up that atom. Now what that does, uh, that means, I'm going to explain that in a bit with an example. The symbol of ma uh, mass deficit is delta M. And remember that it's a scalar quantity. Okay. Now for example, in the first example, It says, find the mass deficit in helium nucleus, which is 4.2, right? That's very simple. If they write nucleus, then it already means that you're going to ignore the electrons and their mass. So, the nucleus of helium has two protons and two neutrons. Now, two times the mass of proton I gave you earlier, right here. So, if you've written it, you can look at it from here. So, mass of proton, again, you don't need to remember that. They're going to give you this themselves. But two times 1.007672u is the value of this. Uh, wasn't it 7276? 7, 7, 7, I haven't written that. He did wrote 7276. 7276. Sorry, my bad. 7276. Right? Is it clear? Now, right. Now what you do is, you simply multiply this and I think then you multiply the mass of neutron which was 1.008665u. Now this is the mass of the constituents, so when they combine, so we're going to write the total mass of constituents which we expect the nucleus to have this mass so expected mass is going to be 4.03188u 
So I'm going to make sure that I write in maximum number of significant figures. However, when you weigh the actual mass of helium nucleus, we get it as 4.001508. Now, as you can see, there's a difference in mass. We expected it to have a higher mass than what it has in reality. And that gives us the mass deficit. So mass deficit delta M now will be you're going to subtract the expected mass from the actual mass. And this is about 0 0.030374 U. Once you have that, then you can easily change it to the energy that was released in this, uh, you know, formation. And according to Einstein's theory of relativity, Einstein's equation. He has said the amount of change in the mass basically converts to energy. And this energy is called the nuclear binding energy. This is the mass defect and that would be the speed of light whole squared. All right, kids, if you have any questions, please let me know here. That's how it works. So remember, the expected mass should be subtracted by the actual mass and you will always find the mass deficit which means this is the amount of mass that has been converted to nuclear binding energy now there is a difference when he's going to give you nucleus and when he's going to give you an atom. So next, we're going to look at the atom. If you could quickly write this down. And if you have any question, please let me know. Don't say. This gives, the, this gives binding energy in joules or electron volts? Joules. You have to convert it. All right. Because speed of light is in. SI units. All right. Now, kids, I will be moving to a new page because I cannot do this here. I think if I squeeze in, do you want me to squeeze in? I don't think so. We'll take a full page for the other one. Now, usually these questions are uh, like calculation heavy, and you need to be very, very careful when you're doing these because if you miss out a single, like, Initially, I made a mistake by writing 7672. If you make a mistake like that, then everything goes wrong. So you need to be very, very careful about that. Recheck your work whenever a question from this chapter comes. Otherwise, the questions are not that hard. Just for calculation maybe. So now it has determined the binding energy of carbon-12 atom. Now, if they say atom, then automatically means 
that you guys need to include the mass of electrons as well now. Mass of an atom of carbon 12 is equal to 12.000000 U. Now, if they give you like six decimal places, so you guys need to remember that calculate everything up to given precision. Precision means decimal places. Otherwise, your question will not be correct. All right? You will always find the marks here you will get. So in carbon 12, there are six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Yes, that is correct. So first of all, we want to find, because uh, the binding happens in the nucleus. It doesn't happen in the, uh, it doesn't happen at the atomic level. It's at the subatomic level. So we're going to do that first. And to do this, first of all, we want to find the mass of carbon nucleus. And we want to find the actual mass. Now, there's no deficit in the mass of electrons because electrons are like free. They are not uh, binded together. So we're going to subtract the mass of six electrons from it. I will try to make sure that I take as many number of decimal places as I can. So this is the mass of electron like this. So just remember, we have six protons, we have six neutrons, and six electrons in the carbon. Now, this basically gives me 1199. 6709U as the mass of the nucleus of carbon. This is the actual mass. Now, what should be the expected mass of carbon 12 nucleus? So that's going to be because it has six protons. So we're going to do six into 1.007276U which is basically about 6.043656U. Then we have six neutrons. And that's basically 6.05199U, like that. Finally, we're going to add them together. And when you add them, this comes out to be 1.0. In fact, let me write it here. The actual mass uh, the, and theoretical mass is 12.095646. Yes. So when you add it, it should come out as 12.095646, like that. You know? Yes. Okay. Uh, wait a second, kids. You can write it down and let's see then. All right, now, so uh, then, so yes, 
you give us the mass of electron as 0.000550 u and you're using 0.0004858 this is a very uh, specific value that i took from google then that's why all right so in each question is going to give you a different value it's not a fixed one but he's going to give you that all right in any case so you don't have to worry about it but the method that i'm doing you should follow this no matter what all right is it clear once you have the actual mass and the expected mass you want to find the mass deficit so the mass deficit will be 12.095646u minus 11.996709u now this mass deficit comes out to be 0.098937u so it means this is the amount of binding energy or equivalent amount of binding energy must have been released that's what we need to find is it clear kids now From this point onwards, now there will be this will be requirement thing. Sometimes the answer is even to ask you in jewel. So in a different color. This basically talks about um, energy in joules and how to do this. And later on, uh, through path of joules, or you can write it as this doesn't matter. Anyway, so in method one, this is the path through joules that's it so delta m we got to first convert that into kilograms because this was in u we should know that 1 u is 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27 this comes out to be 1.642354 times 10 raised to power minus 28 kilograms Notice I'm following the same way I'm using six decimal places every time or even more than that whenever I need to because I don't want to preemptively convert it. Is it clear, everyone? Yes. You can convert the joule answer later on if you want to. So it's up to you. Anyway, once you have this in kg, now you can simply use delta e equals to delta m times c squared you cannot use this formula with any other units you have to have si units in this so we have 1.642354 times uh, 10 raised to minus 20 that is the mass and 3.0 into 10 raised to 8 whole square so you will end up with an answer of 1.478 times 10 raised to negative 11 Usually the answers he's going to expect you to write in four uh, significant figures, so that's fine. You get the binding energy, but then if he further asks you to convert into MeV, so converting joules to mega electron volts, pretty simple method. You see, change in energy in mega electron volt, you just need to divide it with 10 raised to minus 11 by 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19. This will give you the answer in uh, about in EV. And you can directly do it as well if you want to. In mega electron volt, if you divide this, like if you divide the same answer with 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 13, this will give you 92.3 mega electron volt as well. So it's up to you what you want, but uh, you can always try to do what they're asking you. You can uh, convert EV later to mega. That is also possible, but that's uh, really up to you. All right, so this is the first way to go through this. The method two is quite easy. But then that method is a bit trickier because they might change the value. I'll tell you how. So in method two, 
this is through <coughs> MEV only. <coughs> First of all, there's a small derivation that you need to do just to get a hold of it. So one U I know is equivalent to 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27 kilograms. All right, so this is uh, something that I'm going to do as uh, extra. This is not required in this question, but I'm just doing it so that you guys don't miss it out. All right. Now, the next thing you guys need to do is use E equals to MC square. Now you got to put 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27. And this will be 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 whole square. When you get this done, sorry. So this is going to be 1.494 times 10 raised to power minus 10 joules. Then you can convert it to mega electron volt. And if you do, so energy in MeV is going to be 1.494 times 10 raised to minus 10 divided by, you can simply do 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 30. And you will see that it is approximately 934 MeV is equivalent energy with respect to 1U. So you can remember this value if you want to. And a lot of times they're also going to give you this value themselves. Sometimes they also change it because this value is a bit different for each question. Sometimes they're going to give you uh, one U as 931.5, sometimes 932, sometimes 933. And the reason why they do this is because if you check the value of U on Google, okay, wait a second. If you check uh, the value of U, it has a big number in it. It's not just two uh, decimal places. Unified. Atomic mass in kg. So you might see it has a value of 1.66054, right? And it could be even more than that sometimes. So they might have converted it that way. So it might change. So don't worry. But it will be given to you if they ask you a certain question like that. So what you do is once you have this value, now all of this you don't really re require. This is like something redundant. They're going to give you this. But then they can ask you to prove it anyway. The way to change this is pretty simple. You say, all right, I'm going to do this. If you want to find the energy, what you do simply is you multiply this number with the change in M in the value of U. You don't need to convert it to kilograms. So you just doing the red part only. So 934 MeV multiplied by, you just write 0 0.09893 U. Just this. If you do this, so it's going to give you exactly the same answer which is because I rounded it a bit. So it is 92.4 MeV. Do you get it? So it's 92.3, 92.4, but it's the same answer with respect to uh, the what we have done. So the thing is that you're only required to do the red part. The yellow part is for proving that one U is that. If you know that, you can easily use this formula by multiplying the value of 1u in MeV with the mass in u. 
Now remember in this particular uh, method, do not use E equals to MC square. Why you don't want to use this? Because e, MC, e is equal to MC square requires SI units. And these are not SI units. Is it clear everyone? Any question? Please let me know. None from my side. Like it's like plus minus multiply, that's all. There's nothing much to it. But now I think it's a good time that I ask you a question so that I'm uh, happy that you guys can also do this. So the question is binding energy of helium four. You need to do that. Sorry, find. Find binding energy of helium four. I'm just going to give you the actual mass. Actual mass is four E two, which is zero zero one five zero eight. U and the expected mass of this would be helium 42 would be 4.031882 U. And remember, this is for the nucleus only. We don't need to subtract electrons. Now, I just want you guys to find it in MEV. Uh, and using method one only because I haven't given you a specific value of one U in this. All right, kids, can you please do that? You have five minutes. It's a lot for this, but still, tell everyone. Four point five four times ten is for minus twelve joules. No, no, you need to answer that in MEV at the end. Oh. Convert it, please. Twenty-eight point three six mega e electron volt. 28.38.36 mega electron volt. Okay. Can somebody please? Can somebody please uh, confirm that? Okay, everyone, please quickly do it.
okay now just uh, just uh, find the change in mass please four point expected mass minus the actual one then this will be 0 0.03037 for u and finally find the change uh, find the binding energy by using this 0 0.03374 times 1.66 times 10 is to minus 27 and then multiply that by 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 whole square and then just divide this by the value of mega electron volt this will end up giving you 28.36 MeV like that so this is this small question all right kids if you guys have any questions please let me know now no question from my side all right, so I guess then we'll see.